Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Darren. I hope you're all safe and well and having a good stitchy week. Mine's not going too bad so far, and it's only Tuesday. <laughs> so today we're going to be stitching on my Super Size Tiger family, because I haven't worked on him yet this week. I'm a little bit obsessed with the <laughs> posh robin. But never mind. So we'll see what we can get done on this one today. I'm going to work on this one all day today. Well, I did. I tell you, I'm not going to work on it all day because I did two hours on posh robin this morning. <laughs> Seems to be working out really good doing it that way. So for the first two hours, I'll stitch on posh robin. And then I'll do what I need to do. And then I'll stitch on another project. Seems to be working out really well. Got some good stitching in. Although yesterday I was working on London and that one didn't go too well. I made a big boo boo and then I had to frog everything I did <laughs> and reaper it all back in again. I miscounted. That was a bummer when that happened, but never mind. It is what it is. So I do have a couple of uh, questions. Well, a couple. I've got about four. <laughs> so I'll go through those in a bit. So I'll go through life update dates. So, from my last stitch with me, which was Thursday, I got an email from work saying private and confidential. And I thought, this doesn't sound good. So I opened it up and I got a pay rise. I said, thank you for all your continued support over the year. That's a token of our thanks. Well, Gonna give you a pay rise with immediate effect. So woohoo! So that was good. Now normally, I don't know why. Normally, when work gives you a pay rise, it's normally around about ten cents an hour more. <laughs> we went up by a whole dollar. That's like sweet. But on it, it says, "Please do not discuss this pay rise with any of your colleagues." As this is private and confidential for your own. Because last time they gave us a pay rise, one of the lads went round and was asking everybody how much they got. <laughs> now, some didn't get as much as others because they're never there. Can you see where I am? Um, and one of the lads found out that he didn't get as much as everybody else, so he went up complaining to the boss. So, this is the one who's already been sacked once for not, well, just turn up when he wanted to and leaving whenever he wanted to. Uh, and then come back again after I got, I got his job and then he come back and he still turns up whenever he wants to and whatever. So it was him. So he went off and kicked off with the boss last time. And the boss was trying to find out who told him the pays because he was going to sack that person. Uh, but no one would say who it was. So now the private and confidential, you must not tell anybody what is in this email. Anyway, Shane phoned me up that day at lunchtime and he went, I got a pay rise. I went, yes, so did I. He went, oh, I thought it was just me. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, I got one too. So yeah, so we both got a pay rise. Which is good because the rent goes up next month. So that'll cover the rent plus a little bit extra spending. So that'll do us. Um, the lad. I think I told you, one, yeah, the young lad got sacked. Yes, I told you that one, yes. And one of the other guys was trying to get full time. Well, they offered him full time. So he got full time on, I don't know if it was Thursday or Friday. 
And I says to Shane, I said, I bet you any money. I said, he's not in on Monday. He went, why? I says, because he did this last time. Last time, he begged and begged for full time. They gave him full time. He went sick the next day. Uh, and then, this say, because he kept turning up whenever he wanted to or just taking time off, they dropped him back down to casual staff. Um, so they've given him full time again. And he was off Monday. <laughs> so Shane, I told you. So I told you he'd be off. I said, he does it every time. So we'll see how long he keeps his uh, full-time status. <laughs> so according to Shane, no one's been working on my sword this week. So no one's broken it. <laughs> Again. So we'll see how long that lasts. I'm assuming if this other lad comes back into work today, uh, my sword will be back in operation again. I am assuming anyway. So yeah, still got my splint on. I think I've got another two weeks of wearing it before I'm allowed to take it off. Can't wait. It's a pain in the bum, especially at night time, trying to sleep. It kind of gets in my way, because I sleep with my hands under the pillar. I sleep on my front. So I keep getting it caught under the pillar. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up and it's not on my finger. I manage to catch it and pull it off somehow. The only thing we is because it's hard plastic, your finger sweats, especially with the temperatures we've had over here. So you take it off like, to go for a shower or whatever, and your finger looks like you've already had a shower. It's all wrinkly and everything. <laughs> So yeah, so I can't wait to be able to take this off. Well, three and a half more weeks off work. I think that's what you worked out at. Something like that. Nearly, no, be nearly four weeks, because I don't go to the doctors till a Tuesday for some reason. So but yeah, nearly four weeks I've got left off work. So that's good. Spoke to my mum the other day, and they've ordered the new carpet for the stairs and landing. So I get put down this Friday. That wasn't cheap. I asked my brother how much he paid, and he told me, and I was like, "What? Yeah, that's expensive." He says, "Yeah, there were no other type of ones there. He says, it was all I could get." So yeah, it was, wasn't was cheap for the carpet. I think last time we bought a carpet for the, the stairs and the landing, it cost us maybe about 200 pounds. It was a lot more than that this time. So my other brother's come in to fix two of the floorboards near the bathroom because for some reason they've sunk in. So he's coming to fix those I think he said he was doing it today. Uh, ready for when the carpet goes down. And when the carpet goes down on Friday, and so then I'll be getting pictures so I can see what it looks like. And then they're just waiting on the doors. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we're having new, they're having new doors put on upstairs. Because the doors that are on there, they are old, they've been there. 20 odd years? Maybe longer? No longer. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry guys. Um, maybe about 30 years. 
these doors have been on. <laughs> yeah, about 30 years, I think. So. We'll finally get some new doors. Well, the doors we got are what we call eggshell doors. Well, egg box doors. So, the, the whole hollow inside, and when you open them up, it's just like egg boxes. So, yeah. So, we're having proper doors put on, wood ones. My brother's going to be doing that at some point. He's also going to be starting work on my brother's, uh, my brother's, my mother's wet room soon. And I can't thread this needle. I threaded it earlier, earlier on. And I can't thread it. Try a different needle. So yeah, so she, he's going to be starting work on there. Now where the wet room's going, it's going in the living room so looking for me my living room over there is quite long um, so we're partitioning part of that off for the wet room and it's meant to be starting that in the next couple of weeks I think and I says to him I says wouldn't it be better to uh, do the conservatory first because mum's having a conservatory built uh, anyway no that's too big of a job I said, yeah, but the thing is, I said, you're going to do the wet room, and where the wet room's going is where the sofa goes. I said, so, where's the sofa going to go? I said, because there's going to be nowhere for anyone to sit. He says, I'll work something out. I was like, there's nowhere else to put it in there. I mean, it's maybe a longish room, but it's not very wide. Especially we having... Obviously, I'll my mum's stuff in there, so her bed and her set of drawers and stuff like that. It's not very... There's nowhere to put it. That's so what you're going to do, stick it on top of my mum's bed and everyone will just have to sit on there. He says, well, I'm thinking of hanging it from the ceiling. I was like, yeah, all right then. So whether he changes his mind and decides to do the conservatory first, I don't know. <laughs> so my mum's looking forward to getting a wet room anyway so she can have a shower. So as soon as I spring, she'll probably be in shower for an hour. And she's not had one for three and a half years. <laughs> so she's looking forward to that. And then <clears throat> once that's all in and done, the social worker will be coming back out to assess, to see if how long my mum will need with having the wet room. So whether or not she, they can cut some more time off her carers visits or not so let's see what they say on that one so you know I mentioned about this parcel that I'm waiting for that was to be picked up and asked if I could pick it up and they said no because it was already booked for delivery yeah well it still never got delivered so it was meant to be they promised it would be picked up on Thursday Friday morning at the latest on well, Saturday it was still there on Sunday I was going out and it was still there on Sunday so I thought right now as to this I will pop in and pick it up myself. So, I went out on Sunday and I went and uh, met Tia from Calm Creations there on uh, Fossube. So, she works at the Spotlight s store, well, one of the Spotlight stores over here. So, I went to, went and met up with her. Oh, such a lovely lady. First thing she says to me, Bye, you're short. You're a shorty. Well, I was like, thanks. <laughs> Didn't think I was that short, but clearly I was. Um, so I went to pick up a couple of stuff from Spotlight, so Tia was helping me, finding stuff. Sorry, what am I making this? So, so yeah, so I was there for a while. She made me spend way more money than I wanted to. When I 
finished there, I was like, right, I'm going to go to where I need to to pick this parcel up. Now, my car's got sat nav, so I don't know where I'm going. So, I was like, right, I'll use the sat nav to get to meet Tia. <clears throat> get back in the car, and the sat nav wouldn't come on. It just kept saying loading. I thought, well, I'm in a car park, so it's probably not got a signal. So I moved to the end of the car park where it was open, and it still wouldn't pick the signal up. And I was like, okay, it could be the building just blocking it all, so I've just done that one stitch wrong. Um, so I was like, right, I'll move outside. So I left the car park and then pulled up on the road outside. It still wouldn't load the sat-nav up. I was like, what's going off here? So I turned the car off, turned it back on again, still wouldn't load. I was like, great. So I was like, well, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> so I was like, right, how am I going to do this? So I got my phone out and I used the nav on my phone. Now I put in on my phone to avoid any toll roads because where I was going wasn't far, but there's a small toll road that you have to go down. I thought, well, if I avoid that, then I don't have to worry about paying it. So... Normally, when I'm using the sat-nav on my phone, it pings up on my watch when I've got to turn off. Anyway, it wasn't pinging up, so I'm having to keep an eye on my phone. Anyway, I get so far, and it's wanting me to turn down onto a toll road. And I was like, whoa, so I turned off somewhere else. And I messed around with my phone. And then put it back, and it started working on my watch. I was like, oh, that's even better. And again, made sure it said no toll roads. So I set off again, and it I, I ended up going back near, all the way back to where I started from to go down a different road. <laughs> and as I'm going down, it's wanting me to turn off for another toll road. It's like, I've got no toll roads on the thing. Why does he keep telling me to go down these toll roads? Anyway, I thought, well, there's no other way. So I went down this road, and it turns out it leads you to a toll road. So there wasn't a toll there. It leads you to, I think, two toll road areas. So, but I don't go through those. So I was like, oh, that's all right then. So yeah, so needless to say, a, I think it was a 15 minute drive from one place to the next. Took me about 40 minutes. <laughs> anyway, I guess to the store to, to see about my parcel. And I coloured one of the staff there, and I told them what was going on. Sure not. let me just have a word with the manager. Anyway, manager come over. Well, she had to tell her the manager. So the manager come over, and she told her what we were going on. She says, you found up the other day, didn't you? I went, yeah. She says, is it still here? I went, yep. She says, give me two seconds. So she trottles off, comes back, and passes me my parcel. She went, sorry about that. I was like, no, it's all right. So, luckily I didn't have to pay for the delivery, because it was free. So, picked her up, and went to do a bit more shopping, and then come home. So, in this parcel was a sewing machine. Yes, I bought a sewing machine. It was on special. <laughs> it was reduced nearly 50% off. So I got myself a sewing machine, and I was like, right, I'm going to learn to make some project bags, because I need some more project bags for my because I've got way too many projects, as you know. So I need more project bags. Um, so that was on Sunday. So I didn't worry about taking it out on Monday, uh, on Sunday. So yesterday, all right, I'll get this sewing machine out and get it set up and then we can have a crack at making a, a project bag. <coughs> well, this sewing machine doesn't come with instructions. Well, it does, but they're on a DVD. I mean, how many people own DVDs nowadays? And I was like, all right. I was like, well, I could put it on my computer, but my computer's in one room, and I haven't got nowhere to put the sewing machine while I'm on that one. So on the box, there was a QR code. It says, scan this one, and it'll give you easy setup things. I was like, oh, sweet. So I scanned that, and it's green. Yeah, so by now you should have set it all up, all your cottons up by following the instructions. I was like, what instructions? You didn't give me no instructions. 
so yes, yeah, so I spent a while uh, YouTubing <laughs> how to set this thing up. So, who knew that you actually needed two strands of cotton going through your sewing machine? Not me. <laughs> so I did the little bobbin, got that all wound on, and inserted that into the machine. And then went to try and use it, and I was like, well, why ain't this working? <laughs> I thought, what's going on here? So that more YouTubing. And I was like, yep, you need a bobbin on the top, uh, your spool on the top as well. And I was like, well, why didn't he tell you this? So then I put the spool on and then I'm showing you how to wind it all on. Now, this sewing machine has got a uh, an automatic eye feeder or whatever you call it, to thread your needle. Yeah, but it doesn't tell you how to use it. So I had to try and figure out how to do that. So yeah, I finally got that done. <laughs> I was like, right, let's give it a test stitch. So I managed to do a row of stitches. It's like, right, well that works. And then I got sent a pattern. Well, the dimensions for doing project bags. But I completely misunderstood what they were saying. So how they, how I read it, they said that you could get a full bag out of a, know, you call them a fat quarter, or something like that. So I bought a couple of fat quarters because they were on clearance when I was with Tia, <laughs> and I was like, right, okay, so I should be able to get a full project bag out of this. Yeah, nah. <laughs> I was looking at the dimensions and looking measuring this fabric, and it's like, well, that doesn't work out. According to this, the dimensions are, well, all together for the fronts and backs and all that lot, was like 25 inches. My fabric was 22 inches. I was like, well, that's not going to fit. So I was like, well, I wonder if it goes a different way. So I'm measuring it all different directions. It's like, nah, that's not working either. So needless to say, after an hour of trying to measure up fabric <laughs> to make a project bag, I put it all away. <laughs> that's like, this ain't working, nanas to this. So yeah, it turns out I needed two pieces of the same fabric to do the back and the front. And then two pieces of the same fabric for the lining. So I was like, oh well, never mind. So yeah, so no project by cut me. <laughs> so today I'm gonna attempt <laughs> to make a small project bag just so I can get a grip of how it all works and whatnot. So yes, I'll be doing a, a small project bag today or attempting to do a small project bag today. So we'll see how that goes. Now, obviously I bought a zip for doing a large project bag, but I only got the one. <laughs> so it's like, hmm, how am I gonna work this one then? So I may have to just kind of make it up and then do it with a fold over lap and just get some Velcro and Velcro it instead of putting a zipper on. It's only a practice one, so it'll just come in handy for something. So yeah, all fun and games. So once I've done my stitch with me, I'll, uh, I'll play around with that. for half an hour, an hour. And then get back to doing some stitching again. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll be going with this one. While I was out as well, I bought some new crochet hooks and a couple of balls of wool. So we can get to plain doing crochet as well. I haven't started that yet. I will do at some point. <laughs> Yeah. 
So I've not been attacked by any animals this week. <laughs> They've all been good. And Shane hasn't either. So no spiders, no geckos, no nothing. It's been a good week. <laughs> So this fabric it doesn't seem very how I like it tight it seems to have been a bit slack I think I may not pull this part up here at the top tight enough I'll sort it out eventually so again if you haven't watched my latest update and you're watching this first there is a giveaway on there it's a copy of a chart so, my chief eagle spirit, I bought one which is a, a full cross stitch one instead of a kit one like mine. So, instead of doing the half stitches and all the back stitching in it, this is all just full crosses. So, that's up for grabs on there. So, if you haven't already entered for that and you want a chance to win that one, head on over to last weekend's update. So you've got till, well I'll be drawing it this Saturday, so probably Friday for most of you guys. And Shane's sister asked us if we wanted to go to the beach this Saturday. And the beach she wants to go to, I said, you do know that's... Uh, they're renovating that, don't you? She went, what do you mean? I says, they're building all new stuff on it. I says, um, like, places for boats to go and they're doing the park and all this. So she went, no. I went, yeah, they're upgrading it all. She went, oh. So they're worrying about going to another one. And she says, obviously, it depends on the weather. So I'm hoping the weather's absolutely rubbish because I don't want to go. Mind you, I'll probably tell them I won't go anyway. Um, the thing is, when you go with them, I mentioned it before, we don't go to enjoy the beach or anything like that. We go for her husband to go fishing. So if he can't find any fish in one spot, we have to move to another spot. Then we have to move to another spot, I guess. So frustrating. And then when, obviously, I don't mind going to the beach, but I don't like spending all day at the beach. An hour or two, yeah. But... We all go in one car, we've got to wait until he's finished fishing before we can go home. And he will fish for hours and hours and hours, even if he's not catching anything. Someone's like, yeah, I really don't want to go, or if we do go, we're going in two cars. Because I'm not hanging around all day for him to do fishing. Shane will gladly stay there all day. But, mate, no. Nah. I'd get, get bored. I'm just sitting around on the sand or going for a paddle or there's only so much you can do at a beach. But the beaches that we generally go to, there's no shops or anything around. So you can't just nip off and go and get something to eat or get something to drink. It's all food that you've taken. Or you can't just like go browsing or whatever. So it's just sat on the sand. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, nah. I don't want to do that. So, but there is a chance that we have a tropical cyclone forming just off the coast. Um, it hasn't formed yet. They reckon it'll be within the next day or two. But they don't know whether it's heading inland or if it's just going to stay out at sea. But either way, if it stays out just at sea, it's going to get really windy on the coasts. And um, they don't reckon there's going to be that much rain with it if it stays out at sea. It's just gonna be really, really windy and really, really big waves. So that's an excuse not to go. But if it does start coming inland, it's just gonna be absolutely booking it down. So I'm hoping it moves in further inland. <laughs> well, 
Not necessarily hitting, but coming inland, but getting close to the shore. So then we get a lot of rain. So then I don't have to go to the beach. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if it was going there and then just having a look around at some of the stuff and going like on a, a walk through the trails or something like that. But it, you don't, you just sit there, bored out your head. And no, I'm not taking cross stitch into the beach. <laughs> I might look, I drop it in this seat or something. Or a seagull that run off with it. Right, so I've got a couple of questions. So I'll finish this strand and then I'll get the questions up. the weather here I started to cool down a little bit so we're into the low 30s and we're meant to be getting into the I think it's the 20s from tomorrow and I was like yay the night times are still pretty warm but it's like well if it doesn't get so hot during the day it shouldn't be too bad at night time and I was like cool getting into the 20s even better yeah that doesn't last long Um, from Sunday, I think it is. It goes, well, Saturday it gets to, I think, 28 or something like that. And then Sunday it shoots right back up to 37 again. And it's 37 for a couple of days. It's like, seriously, no. It's too hot for this. I'm not made for this kind of heat. <laughs> So yeah, back up into the 37s again. Hopefully that might change if this uh, cyclone materialises. It might cool it down a little bit, I'm hoping. Because two days at 37 is going to be bad. I will have melted. too bothered about the heat during the day it's the night time I like it to be cool so I can sleep so the only time I like the cold is for sleeping so 9 out of 10 just lately I've got the aircon blasted out in the bedroom so it takes it down to like 17 18 degrees so I can sleep but even then the other day when it was 37 it was struggling like mad it, it couldn't call the road couldn't call the roof down at all it was taking forever so yeah so i don't want it to be <laughs> that high oh, oh well i'll cope it's on a couple of days hopefully <laughs>
actually had started and then uh, look at the questions. I'm going to attempt to get this thread started. I really need to use some new ne get some new needles out. <laughs> I'll just put a nut in the end of this one. Yeah. And Kim, if you're watching this, your chart has arrived in the USA. It was in Chicago, and then it said it's now in the USA. So I don't know whereabouts it is, but it is over there somewhere. So hopefully you should get it within the next, hopefully, week. And if you're not watching this, I'll tell you again on Saturday. <laughs> That's what I was doing, I was getting the questions, wasn't I? Let me, get the qu Let me do this one stage and then I'll get the questions and then I know where I'm up to. Right, as I say, I've only got four questions. So the first one is from Sharon Marie, who asks, do I miss work? Uh, like an extra hole in the head. <laughs> at the moment no give me another couple of days and probably I'm one of these I like to keep busy I know I'm doing my stitching and stuff like that but I like I like to be working so normally well in the UK I used to, the longest I used to take off was like two weeks at a time and that was long enough obviously over here we have a three weeks off at Christmas and that is Way too long. And now obviously I've got six weeks off. It's going to be like torture. So I like to be working. So I'm not missing work at the moment. Especially with all the heat. But I will be definitely ready for going back to work. And then the first day back at work I'll be like, I wish I was off again. <laughs> Which I think is generally the case with everybody. So to answer your question, do I miss work? At the moment, no. Ask me again next week, and probably yes. <laughs> So that's that question answered. That was a short, sweet one. And next one is from Mrs. Miggins. Now this one is from an older stitch with me. I don't know why I've only just found it. Uh, so she says she's a press the company for work. Um, stays in business. They always seem to be mended and replacing machines. Yeah, I know. I'm surprised at all. I have no idea. How they uh, they must obviously charge a fortune for the wood. <laughs> and she wants to know, do geckos bite? Um, well, I've never been bit by a gecko. The cats have never been bit by a gecko. So as far as I'm aware... I think they I don't think they have any teeth or if they do they're only really really small for gripping onto insects. Um but I don't think they have teeth, to be fair. But I'm gonna say I'm never they, mind you, they've got a good jaw. I know that much they can grasp onto stuff and not let it get away. So I know they've got a good grip with a jaw. But I don't think they've got teeth. If anybody knows any different, let me know. But <laughs> I don't think they have teeth. I 
as I say, the, the number of geckos I've had to have a pick up by hand to rescue from the cats or whatever, or none of them's ever bit me. So I'm hazarding a guess that they don't. Um, next one is from Darth Vader Stitches. It was, do your family think that you were getting an Aussie accent? Um, no. <laughs> I don't think I've really picked up much of an Aussie accent. Um, mainly because I speak to my mum every week. So, obviously I'm always talking in my normal tongue, so to put it. So yeah, um, I, I, they have noticed that I do say some things that which are Aussie rather than UK. Like for example, I was running about uh, internet on your phone and stuff like that, and I called it data, which is how they say it over here. And my brother's like, you mean data? I was like, yeah, all right then. I said it wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> And I do the uh, the famous Aussie yeah nah. So someone asks you something, do you want one of these? Like, yeah nah. Is that is that a yes or a no? <laughs> you get, no, obviously. <laughs> so I do that. That that needs to get them laughing. So yeah, I do. I say things now, some things differently to what I used to say them. Because obviously I've been over here now four and a half years. Um, so I do say things, some things slightly different to how I used to say over in the UK. But, well, I don't think a lot. I never got pulled up on much anyway, put it that way, when I was over there. <laughs> Except for the whole data, data thing. I'm still not going to pronounce it yogurt like they do over here. It's still yogurt. <laughs> that will always be yogurt. So yeah, no, I don't think I've got much of a an Aussie accent. I think, I'd say it's just the way I say something sometimes. It has maybe a bit of an Aussie twang to it, but not much. I mean, you guys are the best to know, because you know whether I sound like an Englishman or an Aussie man, or an Englishman trying to be an Aussie. <laughs> And then the last one It's again from Mrs. Miggins. So she missed a stitch with me. Uh, so she asked, has my mum ever visited Australia? Um, so no, um, she hasn't. And she probably never will do. Um, my mum hasn't. I think she's been on a couple of flights, but she's not been on many. Uh, no, she did when she was younger, because her dad was in the army, so they were living in army barracks. So they travelled around a lot. She was born in Egypt. And then they've been to like Gibraltar, Paris, and all that lot with the army. So they've moved around. Um, but... I don't think she's ever actually flown when she's been an adult. I'm not 100 percent sure on that one. Um but no, she would she would never come over here. One, she says there's too many animals trying to kill you. <laughs> and two, it'd be too far for her. Uh, with the amount of time flying. Um because she has a a bad back from she had sciatica 
when I was younger, and they removed one of the nerves out of the bottom of a um, one of the discs out of the bottom of a back to ease up the nerve. And ever since then, it's been well, it's still really sensitive. I mean, that was taken out. Oh, I would say about thirty years ago, maybe even longer. Um, so it's still really sensitive to touch. Um, and yeah, she can't maneuver around as much as she used to do. So yeah, I don't think she'd be able to sit on a plane for 14 hours and... <laughs> so yeah, I don't think she'd ever come. My elder brother was on about, he may come over maybe this year. But somehow I can't see that happening either. Uh, he doesn't mind flying, so I know he'd be able to cope with the, with the flight. Uh, but yeah, he may come over this year, he said. Well, I have a funny feeling he probably won't. Maybe next year. He needs to get saving first. He's probably waiting for flights to come down, seeing as they're astronomical. I don't know if they still are or not. I've not searched, but... <laughs> He'll be waiting for flight prices to come down, knowing him. And my twin brother. Who knows if he'll ever come over. Because I say, because if he comes over, it means my other brother's got to look after my mum. <laughs> Which he will not like. Um, well, my mum will have to go into respite for a week or two. Well, I'm assuming it'll be two weeks. Because you can't just come over to Australia for a week holiday. <laughs> and take you longer to get over any jet lag if you suffer from jet lag. Scissors. Where have they gone? I'm stuck to my phone case. <laughs> Next time, I'll work on this one. I'm Definitely. Getting some new needles. These ones are tarnished to hell. When I've done that, I'm going to flip it over now and fasten it off. I could have just done that with the other needle. Never mind. That was all the questions. Oh, I need to put a... I'm going to put a photo in on the end of this. Um, <laughs> of Tiger. I had to take it. So... In this parcel box that I got with my sewing machine in it. Well, I put the box on the floor. Ready to go to the bin. Cats being cats, obviously like playing in boxes. So Tiger gets in this box. Well, I didn't know he was in the box. So I was doing something. I can't remember what I was doing. I was like, I said to Shane, I said, have you seen the cat? Well, Tiger. He says, no. Nah. Anyway, I went looking for him. Anyway, he's in this box. Fast asleep. On his back. Legs in the air. But how he's sleeping, he cannot have been comfortable at all. So I'm going to put a picture in here so you can see what I mean. Well, I'll put it in at the end. But yeah, he, he definitely cannot have been comfortable. <laughs> well, he stayed there for hours. He was he was like that for about two hours. And then it was tea time. So he soon woke up. 
Yeah, you're fast asleep in this bloody box. Now I've got to thread this needle. Mind you, this needle is really bad. <laughs> it's tarnished as anything. I need to get a new one of these out now. I'll be running out of these ones. This is my bolted ones. I'll be running out of these. I think I've already used two out of the new ones I've got. So I don't have many left. It's the only thing as well with me being off and stitching so much. Obviously I'm using them more. So they're tarnishing a lot quicker. I have to get some more ordered. And to make sure I get plenty ordered and all. Because Jake Case is going to be shutting down for a, a couple of weeks, I think she said. She's having surgery on her ankle, diffuser ankle or something. So she's got to, not allowed to put any weight on it at all for I can't remember how many weeks, she said, for, for a fair few weeks. So they're looking at ways of adapting the shop so she can still process orders. But if they can't find a way, then she'll be shut for, I think she said, six weeks. So yeah, so I need to make sure I get stocked up on what I need before she closes, so she closes in. I don't know if it's March or in May. So I need to make sure I get stuff that I need now. Well, I need to get some money saved up first since Tia made me spend it all. Um, I need to get stocked up on it. So obviously while they've been off, I've been trying to find things to find on Netflix and YouTube and what have you. <laughs> between, on my stitching breaks. Now, you lot have probably already seen these, because I'm obviously well behind the times. Uh, but everyone keep going on about The Witcher, which is on Netflix, with Henry Cavill, who plays Superman. Um, so I found that, and I've been binge watching that now. <laughs> I watched the first season. I started the second season yesterday. I'm enjoying it. It was it's actually pretty decent. So I've been watching that. Um, I watched the new Black Panther movie, Wakanda Forever. Eh, it was all right. It wasn't overly brilliant. It wasn't as good as the first one. Mind you, most of them generally aren't. But it was alright. I'd watch it again. When I was first watching it, and if you've not seen it, a little bit of a spoiler, uh, there's some other clan in there and you see them and it's like hey up we've got avatars in here <laughs> blue people oh, i thought it was a, a crossover between marvel and avatar obviously it wasn't <laughs> So yeah, so if any of you know a really good series to, to watch, let me know. Because uh, I'm assuming it won't be long before I finish watching The Witcher. <laughs> so yeah, so if you know any really good series on 
either Netflix or Disney. Let me know. And then I can uh, have a look at them, see if they're up to my standards of what I like to watch. <laughs> end it after this strand so if you do have any questions or comments then again as always feel free to drop those down below in the comment section or again you can email me as always email address is dizzysteacher at gmail.com or I am on Instagram as dizzysteacher or if you're on the Facebook group, you can message me in there as well. And then we'll have a get any questions on the next stitch with me or I'll answer you. <laughs> so yeah, there will be another Well, there will be there should be another stitch with me this week. Which will go up, <clears throat> so it's Tuesday today, so it'll go up on Thursday. Don't know which project we'll do with that one. It'll either be the Sunset Koala or Snow Dragon, I think. Well, Snow Dragon, I need to sort the flosses out. Because although I've got all the flosses for it, I didn't sort them all out. So none of them have been bobbinated or anything like that. So <laughs> it might be yeah, Sunset Koala. It might be easier than me having to keep stopping and starting the video just in order to uh, sort the floss out. We'll get the floss prepared. See if we can pin stitch using a ball tube needle. Okay, looks like you can. That's a new trick. Even better. <laughs> oh no, I'll just pull it back out. Maybe not. Okay, looks like you can pin stitch with a ball tip needle. That saves me swapping the needle around all the time. So let's just mark off these and then we'll see how much we've done. Get rid of the strand. Oh, I was one stitch shy of 200. <laughs> 199 stitches. So, not bad for an hour long video so that'll do it's coming along it's getting there hopefully this will get a lot more work on it this week as soon as I didn't get any on it last week uh, 
So, right, guys. So that's it for this one. So I just, I'll get another one done later on uh, for Thursday. So until then, take care. Stay safe. Happy stitching. Until my next video. Thanks for watching. And bye-bye for now.